Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second edition of Focus Fire. I am, of course, Lothans, and our priority target this week is the co-captain of the team Cookie Cutters that plays in the prep phase league every weekend in the seasons. Now the support specialist on the team currently, none other than Remney. Thank you for joining me. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Um, just kind of chilling out here a little bit late. Yeah, absolutely. So we found this time was the best to meet up here. So it is nighttime for both of us here, guys. So let's jump right in here, Remney. Inquiring minds want to know, what is your real first name? Uh, Ken. All right. Excellent. And where are you from? Um, I am in uh, North Carolina. Okay. Did you grow up there or did you move? No. There? No, I'm from all over. I'm an army brat. So okay. I've been from East Coast to West Coast and everywhere in between. So is that exciting for you moving around a lot? Of, I know a lot of people don't like that. There are army brats. But, I mean, was it something you enjoyed moving around or is it not? Yes, actually, I because I still did it even after the fact. Okay. Um, I I mean, most recently I was living in Alaska, so before wow. I came here. Yep. Excellent. So, so and, and that was fun. That's a very different environment, Alaska to the Carolinas. That's that's pretty different entirely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which do you prefer, heat or cold? Um, somewhere in between. Somewhere I mean, I, I, I like the I like the heat, but if I could stay away from snow, I'll stay away from snow. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you're doing pretty good down there. So, I guess going towards the game now, how did you actually find out about Atlas Reactor for the first time? I've been playing MOBAs for a while, and I was looking for something new. Yeah. And you know, so I'm always I'm always scouting around for new games and things like that, new things to try. And Absolutely. just kind of kind of came across it one day. Um, about in the middle of the alpha. Sure, and that's exactly how I found it as well. I think I got in just a, a skosh before you did, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as in the game, you've been playing it for some time now, like you said, since the earlier alphas. What is your favorite freelancer, and why would that be? Um, Zuki was always my longtime favorite, um, and then you know I started delving into some other ones. But Zuki probably will always be my favorite just because I like a lot of her versatility. What she brings to the table, she can, you know, she's got all her AoE, but on top of her AoE, she also do, can do some high single target damage. And um, she's got some general utility as far as, like, sticky bombs getting around people's shields and stuff like that. So she, she, it doesn't seem like she's got all that at, for, at first, but once you start really getting into her, she, she's got a lot to work with. There's definitely a difference between picking Zuki up for the first time and then playing her for maybe a couple of months and really understanding how to utilize her better, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, Zuka Mania running wild. I love that. No question about it. So I guess going back to your, to your past here a little bit, when did you actually first start gaming? And what game was it, if you can recall? Oh, God. Um, well, let's see. My first game was probably when I was about three years old. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I, I started playing. I started playing PC games like way back. That's that's almost thirty years ago. That's ridiculous <laughs> to me. <laughs> um, the first game I played, I think, was King's Quest, actually. Oh, like wow. the first, yeah, the first real game, it was King's Quest, and um, no, I, I think that was it was King's Quest, and then this one game that I remember very clearly called Guerrilla Wars, and it was this really really old DOS game. Um, it's kind of like the Worms Worms type game. Yeah, it's throw explosive bananas at each other. <laughs> that, that's and I think that's where the the explosive banana and worms came from. But yeah, that's that's basically what it is. But it it actually it was weird because it involved math. Like you had to you know choose correct angles and stuff like oh, that. Right, right. I was learning this stuff at like three and four, so <laughs> it was really freaking weird for me. It might have uh, been like a, a educational program, maybe just hidden in there somewhere. Yeah, that, that's kind of. I think that's more or less what it kind of was. Um, but yeah, it's like super super old DOS games. Yeah, the first PC game I ever played was. Oregon Trail, and it was it was at school, so like 
everybody yeah. everybody always fought over the Oregon Trail. They had I, two, I remember that. <laughs> they had two uh, discs of it, the old floppy discs of it, mm-hmm. and man, everybody was like fighting over those. Yeah, um, it was Oregon Trail and uh, what was it? The Mother Goose game, like that weird. It was like King's Quest, like the King's Quest style game, but it was all the Mother Goose uh, fables. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those are the two games that I remember. That and, and the math, whatever that that crazy math whiz game was. No, math I think Blaster. I recall that. But that's I don't... Math Blaster. <laughs> oh right, Math Blaster. Yeah, that was that's a classic, man. That played. Yeah. Like <laughs> so if you had to choose one thing in your life to be your most favorite, whether it be a person, a place, or a thing, what or who would that be? My most favorite. Yeah. Your most precious oh. thing in your life? Well, right now, obviously, it'd be my family. I mean, I, I love my, both my kids. I got a uh, two-year-old son, a four-year-old daughter, and a um, kind of a, a half-son um, who's 12. So I am I enjoy my family. Excellent. Excellent answer. So now we're going to move into the kind of the meat and potatoes, really get in there and find out all about Remney. So, where does the name Remney actually come from? That is from a... I used to do a lot of story writing when I was younger. Um, and the, the Remney name comes from uh, this series that I came up with. is basically the main character off of it. Okay. Uh, and that series... I. Couldn't I, I got a couple short stories out of it. I wanted to eventually write a book out of it. Didn't really I couldn't, you know, turn that around into that. So I ended up turning it into um, a card game, which I'm actually currently working on. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So like a tabletop type thing, you're trying to code it into it a is, computer game? Um, well, I mean I the tabletop portion of it, I mean I've pretty much already got done. I already and this was you know six seven years ago that i actually completed this like um uh, prototype format for this okay. game um it's a i mean it's it's a trading card game um it's a sci-fi it's basically a sci-fi fantasy game that i've been working on for a while but i've got already 200 cards done for it the whole rule book set out for it all that stuff and i've i've actually had chances to uh play it um, print out print out the cards and stuff like that. Play it with people in real life. See how they enjoyed it. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Um, I had a small kind of um, prototype uh, PC version of it built using a program called Wacky that I had a friend help me kind of implement into it. And I tried to get a Kickstarter done with it. Didn't go nowhere because I, I didn't it, because the prototype just kind of looked kind of it was sort of bad. It was sort of like playing tabletop simulator but like really really bad graphics <laughs> okay so yeah so i'm i'm trying to work on building it into unity right now but i'm not so good at coding so <laughs> I, i'm kind of searching around for people to help me out with it well hopefully that'll be something to network in you guys paying attention helping do some coding what hobbies do you have outside of gaming i know you're you're get got the card game thing you're just pretty much a hobby at this point what else do you have going on um, that's really is my one big hobby. Um, I mean, I like to, if I have any figures with me right now, um, it's part of the gaming, but I like to paint figurines. Like okay. I actually yeah. like a, a tabletop. Um, uh, I used to play War Machine a lot, and I loved painting those figurines, those those die, oh, yeah. die cast models that came out of them. Um. But that's that's generally it. I mean, I I game about everything. I, I can play just about every, everything you know you throw in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you were originally the sole captain of Cookie Cutters. Now we mentioned at the start of the video, pretty much the co-captain right now with Lava Cookie Love. Mm-hmm. How did you originally find the people? Four cookie cutters back in season one of the prep phase league to, to get that rolling. Um, we kind of just mishmashed it together. Um, 
me and Cookie talked about getting a team, building up a team. We had started playing with uh, with each other for a while, and really enjoyed, you know, our the dynamic that me and her had as far as playing and you know covering each other. And from there, you know, the uh, first week of the PPL came out, and we said, you know, this is really cool. We want to get we want to get a team together, um, and so we just kind of threw it together very quickly. Um, we didn't do what we did with this, you know, this recent season where we actually held tryouts, yeah, uh, which was super successful. It was a whole lot of fun to get that done because not only did we get our team together then, but we also helped other teams form up, like uh, Love Bites. Right. Uh, they they that. were, yeah, they, they had all tried out for it and ended up turning themselves into an old team. Um, but as far as the other two players we had, um, not Gommelnox and Awe, um, they were more or less just kind of friends that Cookie and I had known, and we just kind of went up and asked them, and they said they were, you know, they were into it. Um, but that that's about all it all it took, <laughs> just to, just to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really got serious. You mentioned earlier you started holding tryouts going into season two. Mm-hmm. Um, it got kind of serious when the prize money started showing up. You know, I think that changed a lot of people's uh, view towards it. For, at first, it was just for fun. Even the PPO guys had no idea the prize money was going to come. Mm-hmm. And uh, so now with an even bigger prize pool, is that on your guys' mind at all? I mean, is it, is it more frustrating when you lose a game now as, as it was before when there was no prize money that anybody knew of? Or is it one of those things where you kind of try to put it to the side and focus on the game itself? Uh, it's mostly focusing on the game. I mean, it's a bonus, of course, that it's there. Um, but it's we're over the last couple of weeks we've been frustrated with ourselves because of the the bad play we've had in in quite a bit of it and we we came to realize this week that we just were trying too hard like we we were over over dedicating ourselves to it yeah. so we took like a good week uh, a week time off to uh, kind of gather ourselves and and then you know last week we got we we at least got a sweep in. And then after playing outplayed, which was fun, uh, didn't didn't go so well for us, but it was still fun. <laughs> um, but that that's mostly what we're focusing on right now is not you know, not focusing too hard on it, and just trying to make sure we we keep the fun in the game, so we don't you know, we don't get so frustrated with what's going on that we just outright want to quit kind of thing. Oh, absolutely! I would hate to see that day come. I like all you guys so. I mean, just to keep on that topic here, a great question would be, I think, obviously there's 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 no doubt winning every game is the pr- priority. That's what mm-hmm. everybody wants to do. But when the loss comes, how do you personally, and just talking about you yourself, stay focused and positive for the next match? I don't do much of anything. I'm the kind of person who I'll get frustrated with myself for about five minutes, and then I'll forget it. <laughs> and then I'll just carry on. Uh, yeah. I... I pick myself up immediately after stuff like that. Like I'll I'll think it over in my head for a moment and figure out what I did wrong. Be kind of frustrated that I didn't do certain things here or there. Um, but then I'll just I'll just leave it at that. I'll go back to it later and I'll just carry on, keep going. Okay. Now, as a co-captain of a of a you know competitive team, you know, obviously the money's on the line. It's got to be on everybody's mind at least a little bit. You know, the fun is the most important thing in my opinion, still just to have fun and enjoy yourself. However, how do you, as one of the leaders of your team, kind of try to prepare everybody on the roster to go into that weekend for the matches? We do it as a group thing. As you know, it's not just me. We each Mm -hmm. do our own little things to help the group prepare. Um, we set aside a time to go over, we do kind of like a share view where we'll go, we'll go over all of our uh, videos of the past week, review it, things that we should have done here, things that we did good, that kind of stuff. Um, and then generally the day before our tournament games, we will, uh, look over, you know, we'll see who we're matched up against and we'll look over some of the videos on, on who we're playing, um, the the day the day prior to it so we we kind of you know prep ourselves for what's to come a little bit of course it, it doesn't always swing our way but sometimes it does um <laughs> just <laughs> and, and a lot of what we're finding is that we're 
sometimes forcing ourselves into to playing roles that we're not quite comfortable with yet instead of playing what we're most comfortable with. And because we find we find that we win a lot more often when we just play like that. We sure. just you know play normally, um, not play it like it's a pub match, but you know play play what you're comfortable with regardless. So yeah, sure, absolutely. Now, when did you realize that you wanted to get into the competitive side of Atlas Reactor? And on the same token, is this your first taste of competitive gaming? Not my first taste of competitive gaming. Um, I mean, I like I said before, I played games for you know years and years, mm-hmm. and I had been playing in you know Magic tournaments, stuff like that, a lot of okay. tabletop stuff. So it began with you know way back with you know some of the original Magic tournaments and things like that. Um, like my first real tournament experience was way back in, I want to see Tempest set for Magic. So, you know, that's 20 years ago, at least. <laughs> that's way back. Um, more recent, or the, the biggest competitive thing that I've ever been into was uh, for Mage Knight, a uh, tabletop game from about 15 years ago. And I was rated top I was rated at least top 50 in the U.S. in playing and playing it, um, where I had played it in Colorado uh, for several years. The uh, game master that ran the tournaments was actually a one of the the moderators and one of the the runners for the uh, head company oh, okay. um, that ran the game. So I, I got into a lot of main tournaments out of that. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and as far and you know, I've been into competitive stuff a lot ever since then. Um, for Atlas Reactor, as soon as I saw the way Atlas Atlas Reactor played, you know, I wanted to be competitive with it immediately. <laughs> as my it, this the type of game that Atlas Reactor is just fits the my favorite genre so well. I love strategy RPG games. So you're thinking like uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, Ogre Battle, all those kinds of all the, the grid based kind of games. Yeah. Those are my favorite genre to play. And this kind of just fit right in with it super, super well. Well, great. Now, as sort of a seasoned veteran of playing Atlas Reactor, we mentioned you came in during the alphas, the earlier, earlier ones. What advice would you give somebody looking at Atlas Reactor for the first time? I mean, you, it's not everybody's cup of tea because of the way it plays, but, you know, you want to at least try to, I'd say at least try to give it maybe ten, a good 10 games to really see if you get into it or not. Um, always ask um, some of the other players. Uh, generally, we have a fairly, fairly good community, at least if you stick to Discord. <laughs> um, but a, a lot of our Discord community is, you know, awesome. Everybody kind of sticks up sticks up for each other kind of helps each other out a lot of the time so you know any anybody who's really wants to learn the game get into it that's where you'd want to go is the discord to talk with people the most um but it's it's not it the game has some skill to it but you, you've got to learn how to predict you know predict people that is the biggest thing in the game is predicting what people are going to do when and you know you kind of have to it's kind of like playing a chess match. You have to look three steps ahead of your opponent a lot of times. All right. So. Excellent advice from uh, from Remney there. Now, before we wrap everything up, Remney, what would you like to say to your fans or perhaps just the fans of cookie cutters in general before we uh, close off here? I mean, I know I've got, I've got a few fans that watch my stream um, since I do tend to stream Atlas Reactor quite a bit recently. Um, and people... People enjoy watching that. I try to answer questions while I'm streaming and that kind of stuff. So, you know, you guys, anybody who enjoys watching me play, feel free to watch me whenever you want on my stream. Um, I'm always happy to help anybody who wants, you know, wants that kind of help, wants some advice on some things going on. You know, I I play very differently than most people, as a lot of people will see where I play pretty aggressively, even when I'm playing supports. (laughs) Now, Rimney, guys, is famous or infamous, depending on who you talk to, for his damage Aurora build. That's the first experience I ever had with Rimney, I think, is just getting destroyed by an Aurora doing like four or 500 damage a game. It was ridiculous. 
I love that. That's it was so much fun to do. <laughs> and I get I get yelled at on my I get I get bugged by my team so much for playing that style just because I like playing that aggressive, like passive aggressive support kind of thing. <laughs> All right. I mean, as far as you know, fans of cookie cutters, just uh, keep us keep tuned to us. We're not giving up. We're we're gonna try and uh, ham it out this this weekend. Yeah. So good luck in the future of the PPL, guys. I hope you do bite and scratch and claw your way into that tournament. It's gonna be a tough road. You only got one weekend to go to get into that yeah. top six. But, ladies and gentlemen, that was Remy from Cookie Cutters, the co-captain of the team, support specialist. Remy, we're going to kind of go out to some music here. So if you want to do a little dance groove with me, we're going to go out to that. So I'm going to start, uh, start grooving. All right. Hey, guys. Lothan's here. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode number two of Focus Fire with Lothans when our priority target was once again Remney. Now, check out everything on the left side of your screen there. That's my social media links in there, and Remney's are below, so definitely give those a shout, and we'll see you next week.